Hello everyone and welcome to another Monday evening of Creating With Me. I'm so glad you can join um, and happy to have you here. Now I'm starting off something that's going to make some of you excited and some of you cringe. I am starting out uh, off tonight with Christmas in July. Now um, I'm not somebody who plans ahead usually all that much but um, my neighbors are having a Christmas in July gathering this coming weekend, and I have a sister who makes all of her Christmas cards in July. And so I thought I would just spend um, uh, an evening uh, getting your wheels turning for Christmas cards and maybe exploring a few other things too. Am I going to do Christmas cards from now until December? No, I am going to be doing other things as well. But um, we're just going to take a little Christmas in July uh, jaunt today. Catherine, hi, so good to have you here. Let's go down to my desk here and get things set up. Uh, there we go. Get this in place first. Hi, Fran. And there's somebody who does do Christmas, her Christmas cards in July. So as we are doing this, what are, what, when you think of Christmas, what is one thing that comes to mind? Is it the carols? Is it um, the food? Is it the crafts? Is it the giddy people? Um, just uh, what is one thing that comes to mind? I'm just trying to um, share this to my other group. And while I'm doing that, I wanted to, uh, and you're jotting down what you um, think of when you think of Christmas, um, I would just like to remind you to be on the lookout. Have uh, shortbread cookies. Oh, yum. Oh, Fran, you got your catalogs today. That was my next question. Did anybody else get these precious catalogs today? So if Fran got them, that means they are starting to arrive in mailboxes. So be on the lookout. They will come together. So it would be the mini catalog. It says July, but because there were so many... Um, issues they've they pushed it back to august and then the celebration brochure which is august to september so both of these you can start ordering from august 3rd unless you're a demonstrator and then you can order from it now i'm seeing things like butter tarts and sh oh shortbread yum 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 Okay, well, we're going to just go on here. Um, just a little reminder that the designer series paper sale is still on 15% off of these nine papers. And one of those papers is the Tidings of Christmas. And I am going to use this paper tonight. This is gorgeous paper. It is six by six. So this is the size of it right here. And this is one side. So you've got these nice rich colors fairly neutral colors um, like that and then on the other side you've got these so lots of versatility here it doesn't have to necessarily be Christmas and the coordinating colors are these ones here so we've got cherry cobbler evening evergreen misty moonlight Sahara sand and soft succulent and they look fabulous together there so Hi, Sue. Hi, Diana. Hi, everyone. So glad to have you here. This is great. In uh, keeping with the Designer Series paper sale, I have a class going on right now. It's Use Your Stash of Designer Paper. And you can uh, go to this link here, and I will also post it again. It it is I posted it last week, so if you scroll down, you would find it. But... Um, what this how this works is that um you i put design the projects i give you a handout with the measurements i also do a video and i show you how you can use the projects with what you have on hand particularly your designer paper or you could make your own designer paper so if that is something that interests you uh be sure to follow that link and take Take part in that. Hi, Roz. Glad to have you here. So what I am doing tonight is in the annual catalog, there is a little Christmas section. And one of the um, 
stamp sets or and bundle is this one here evergreen elegance so this is a gorgeous stamp set and it actually the words are christmassy um but the trees could be used any time of the year and the stars for birthdays and that kind of thing and in the bundle comes a punch so let me just show you that bundle in real life so here is the stamp set right here um so we've got this little a patch for the ground we've got three different sizes of trees the branch the stars and two verses and a merry christmas i love it when you've got words for the inside outside and you've got the images and then the other part of the bundle is this punch and unless you've been stamping for a long time you might be saying that is the weirdest looking punch i've ever seen and this is um a really neat punch in that well let me just show it to you I'm going to bring in some evening evergreen and the punch whoops and let's throw the punch around a little bit the punch has a ledge here so when you put your paper in you're going to slide it all the way down to the ledge so I'm just going to pop it in there and press and what has happened now is I have all these neat evergreen trees. Now, in order to get the next one lined up, I'm going to again push it right down to that ledge. That's important to keep everything lined up. And then, I don't know if you can see, I'm, here, I'll hold it up. When it's not lined up, it's like that. But then when you line it up, it's, can you see how it covers the design that's there? Now I have to make sure I do that. Always making sure that the unpunched part is right down. And now I've got a bigger one and then I could just keep going and I could punch trees to my heart's content. Now the evening evergreen paper works beautifully, of course, but you could always use the punch for other things. What about making some fall trees? Okay, so let's let's try some of these. Look at that. Wouldn't that look neat on a... And you can punch them all or you can just punch a few. But wouldn't that look neat on a piece of paper? Well, let's... Here, we've got this here. So you don't... You aren't limited to just... Um, Christmas with this punch. You can use it for other occasions too. So let's clear that away and let's bring in the project. So first off we are going to start with a piece of cardstock. This is Sahara sand and we're going to go cut it four and a quarter by eleven and score at five and a half. So four and a quarter is the halfway mark here and it is one of the traditional si whoops, sizes. So if you line it up at four and a quarter and if you butt your paper right up against this ledge you're going to have a straight cut. So there we've got it there so there for and I've got one for another time. What I'm meant to show you and I forgot if I was making several of these cards I would have done my scoring first because if I had done my scoring first and then when I cut it I would have two ready to go but I forgot to do that so now and then I'm going to line it up at five and a half and score it and that is my card base I just thought I would show you that because sometimes I miss that step and some of you are just learning how to do this and it's always good to have a little bit of a refresher. So we're going to fold on that score line and burnish the fold like that. You love that punch? Lynn, I do too. It is really neat. I can see myself using it a lot. So now we have the card base done. Now we're going to bring in the designer paper. This is a six by six piece and we want to cut it five by three and three quarters. So three and three quarters like this. This is for it. I can use this on the envelope flap if I want. And uh, then five. So 
So that, that's the measurements of that. And we'll tuck this away. That could be used on the inside. Or I could put trees on the inside. I have options. So many options. And then I have a piece of basic white cardstock that's four by five and a quarter. And what eventually is going to happen, just so you get a visual here, is this designer paper is going to go on the white and it is going to go on here. But we have a few things to do before we do that. Now, I am going to bring in some punched trees. And I got a little punch happy, but I wanted to build a little forest on here. Oh, before I do that, I was playing around with an idea. What do you think of bringing in the evergreen forest embossing folder and to embossing trees in the background? What do you think of that? And if you're just wondering, say, I don't know how that would be. I tried it on a scrap and it looks like this. Is, should, I, should I go ahead and do it? What do you think? And then we're going to put some trees. I think it would be pretty neat. Let's give it a try. Um, so let's move this out of the way and bring my stamp and cut and emboss machine in. Judy saying yes. Okay, that's all. I just needed to see a yes. Because as you can tell, I was likely going to do it anyway. I just think it's going to look neat. So I'm taking all of these pieces out of the machine and just down to level one. And I am bringing in this. Now, the nice thing about the embossing folders, it has a line to line it up. And what I'm going to watch for, I know this is kind of hard to see, is I don't want the trees to go off the top of the paper. So I do want them to get close to the top. But, uh, oh, you'd ink up the folder. Ooh, Roz, now there's taking it another step. That would look really neat, too. So here we've got it like that. Now embossing folders should go in fold first, if at all possible. And this is a 3D one. So we're going to use this special plate. So the sandwich is number one and number four. And then we're going to put it through and let the magic happen. And then we can get this out of the way. Take it apart. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. So let's take this away so we've got some space. And I'm going to bring in my silicone mat. Just put it underneath like that. And I want to layer some trees on here. So. I am thinking maybe, maybe some of the, um, I'm just going to snip that off, soft succulent. And then I love the soft succulent shimmer paper, or glimmer, sh shimmer paper. I'm going to do that. And do you see when you offset it just a little bit? And then I'm going to bring in some evening evergreen and about like that. What do you think of my little forest? I, I like them doing overkill. Another thing you can do with the trees is run them through the embossing folder too. Um, we're not doing that tonight and we could have thrown in this, but I think I'm getting a little carried away. I started out with just the evergreen and then I just kept uh, building. So let's back it up and we're going to adhere this one first. And don't have to be too fussy because we're going to have lots of other things going down on top. So let's uh, fasten this down about there and I can trim what's sticking off over the end afterwards and then I'm going to put down I want the shiny side up the 
the sparkly side up, so make sure I put the adhesive on the other side. Whoops! Do you know what I forgot to do is measure. I think I don't need those two trees. So there we go. We can go like that and just offset them so that they look a little shadowy. And I'm not worried about the glue because I am adding some other layers. Oh, I better slide that down a bit. There we go. And now we will bring in this one here. And so, okay. And some glue to this. Now I could have curled the edges and stuff, but we will just stop at this and enjoy our little forest. There we go, just like that. Now in the catalog, there's a gorgeous evergreen ribbon. That's a woven ribbon and I don't have it. It's, it's, I actually I'm, have ordered it, but it's not here. But so I'm going to use the, the other evening evergreen ribbon that um, is this one here. So before we fasten this down, I'm just going to wrap this ribbon around, bring in my ribbon scissors that haven't touched paper, well, other than when I have forgotten, and let's flip this over and bring in my seal. Run some seal down here just to catch the ribbon. And what the ribbon is going to do is just kind of anchor the trees so that they don't look like they're floating through space here. So wrap that around, stick it into my adhesive. I'm just, I'm a curious about something. Would it look better? Yes, I think it would. Just up a smidge higher so we didn't see the Sahara sand peeking through the ribbon. So there, they look a little more anchored there. There we go. And I'm not worried about this because my greeting is going to be going over there anyway. So now I can um, anchor that adhere it to the other layers of the card. You love the forest here, Diana? I'm so glad. It, it's actually fun. You, it's so addictive. You keep wanting to build more and more of a forest. I've got to tell you that. And it looks like my ribbon's a little bit crooked. Let's get it straightened around. Put this up here. And what I like to do is give it a good burnish from the back then I don't have to worry about dislodging anything or smearing stuff where it doesn't belong. And now we're going to put this to the card front. Woo! Like this. Look at how that comes together. Doesn't it look neat, all those, those colors? It's just a subtle Christmas uh, look there. So now we need to add some greeting. So there are wonderful greetings in this set, which I put down somewhere, there we go. So there's, uh, it's friends like you that make this season so wonderful. May the beauty of this season bring you joy, warmth, and, and warm memories to cherish throughout the year. And then we've got Merry Christmas for the inside. So I think what I'm going to do here, if this is bugging me, my, my ribbon is not straight. Give it another little nudge. There we go. So I decided that this die would work really well, but you could use whatever, or punch, pardon me, punch or die that you want that fits this. What I do is punch this out of scrap paper. Here, I'll punch it out of this scrap paper. And then I take it and travel through my catalog or through the stamp set and see if it's going to fit. And that will just fit. So then what I do is I uh, use stamp it first and then I punch it out and voila, I've got it all done. I stamped it in evening evergreen and then I punched another one. So what am I going to do with this? I just thought this, this looked okay. 
like that, but I thought it might look better just being framed a little bit with the Evening Evergreen. And I could have done it like this. And you might say, but they're the same size, Lillian. Well, you just work a little magic. You cut it apart. Bring this in. Add a little adhesive to one end. And put it down so that it makes a little bit of a border here, like that. And then add adhesive to the other end and do the same thing. I'm going to just pick it up because it's hard for me to see here and try to make sure that it is even and now I can put some dimensionals on it and put it on there. So let's bring in the dimensionals. Now usually with dimensionals I like to straddle the ribbon but this is this some of them might hit the ribbon but that's no biggie. We'll uh, just it'll work. They, it, they're not all going to be hitting the ribbon at least. The reason I like to miss the ribbon is the ribbon pushes the dimensionals up and then they, they don't work very well. So now I am going to just pop that. Let's. I'm just going to rest it there or a little higher. My plan was to put it here. I'll stick with my plan. There we go. So there, it's down like that. Now I can tie a, a little bow and put it on here, or I can tie a cross piece, or I can do nothing at all if I want, because it looks pretty good like that. But I will do just what I call a cross piece. I'll just slide it under and just tie it in a knot. Just kind of finishes it off. And then I think if we add a few jewels, and we have ourselves a card. Now, some of you talk ask about how do I get knots looking. I kind of watch to see how it's going and then decide which part of the ribbon I want to pull. And um, there we go, just like that. Now I'm going to bring in the in-colored jewels that coordinate with the Evening Evergreen and the Soft Succulent. And let's just get some of this stuff out of the way. And let's add a few here. Okay, we'll put one here, one here. It's amazing what these do, isn't it? Just adds a little bit. And with this, that might be good enough. Now, what about the inside? Now, the inside, we can stamp Merry Christmas, we can do whatever, but we could also, I just, I forgot to bring my inside paper here, but just as a little reminder, if I had the paper here, I could decorate the inside with the trees as well. Let me just grab it. So if we put this here, we can stamp our message here, and we could have our just a few trees here like that and we'd be good to go. So that is tonight's card. I have a few more things to share with you but um, I hope that inspires you and I just wanted to share that partly because this is so gorgeous and it's uh, so maybe just a little bit overlooked and also it can be used for all different times of the year, if you're needing some trees for other occasions. So that being said, I have something special to share with you. Um, Joanne and Marilyn and I have a Christmas gift for you. So what we've decided and what we've prepared is we have prepared six different projects and we are going to offer the tutorial, just the PDF, to you for free if you purchase $60 or more before the end of July. So you get all of these tutorials free. So um, I'm not going to show them all to you, but I will give you a little 
peek, a little tease, as Judy would say. So here are a few of them. And one of these is is not really a card. It's a little more than a card. So, um, th so those are the projects. Now you might say, but but Lillian, I'm a demonstrator or I order from um, another demonstrator and that's fine. But you really still want this tutorial? You can order it too for $20. So either way, you can have this and um, I'm going to be posting the information right after I finish tonight. So stay tuned. It will also be in my newsletter. So make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You'll always find things like this in my newsletter as well. But this is a Christmas gift to you. So Merry Christmas in July. Um, Evergreen Elegance Tutorial. Six free tutorials right there. So I think that about wraps this up. Diana, you're saying this is a wow card? Wow, thank you. I am thrilled that you're calling it that. And it, guess what? It wasn't very hard, was it? So the these products will be used in the Evergreen Elegance class. So we will use some of the designer paper, the stamp set, and the punch. Um, as as always, though, if you want to take the class ideas and adapt them to other things, you can do that too. So I, and you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, for example, I took this card and uh, remade this card, but I made it this way. So here is the exact same card, changed up the designer paper and the paper and the stamps and the the twine and you've got two totally different looks so don't forget that you can do that with card designs so thank you so much for joining me tonight i've really enjoyed this and i hope you like that card if you're watching on youtube remember to hit subscribe if you're watching here and you liked it i would love it if you shared or hit the like button and thanks for your comments because that's great too so thank you everybody and bye bye